Terrific. Great. Hey, well, good afternoon. I want to thank um, media and others for, for joining me, Assemblyman Zabrowski, Supervisor Tony Cardone here in Monroe, as well as Aaron Freed, uh, as we celebrate a happy moment, something that you've waited uh, quite some time to celebrate, and that is not only the passage, which happened earlier this year, but now the enactment of Harper's Law. Uh, literally just a couple of hours ago, the governor signed uh, Harper's Law uh, um, into New York State law. And so here we are uh, really fulfilling um, the primary purpose of government, and that is to keep its citizens safe. Um, in November of 2016, um, Aaron and his family's life changed forever. Um, Aaron uh, and his family live here in the town of Monroe in Harriman. And it was that year, it was that month where they suffered the greatest tragedy of all. Um, they lost their three-year-old Harper um, to um, a furniture tip over. Uh, and you know, this is something that I think most families don't think could ever happen to them, I imagine, um, but happens frequently. Uh, in any given year, um, upwards of five, 6,000 children um, in this country wind up in an ER because furniture tipped over onto them. Dozens of them die. And so it was Aaron and his family and the board of Harper Smiles and their supporters who turned that tragedy, that unthinkable tragedy, into Harper's Law, which has been around for a number of years now, but seeks to uh, really learn from the consequences of what happened, that unthinkable tragedy, and make society safer, make other children safer here in New York State. And so as of today, now finally, uh, that's what they've done, and it's because of his family's tireless advocacy that we are even remotely close to this moment today. Uh, Assemblyman Browski uh, has carried the bill for a number of years in the Assembly, uh, where I served as a colleague up until this year, and upon um, entering the State Senate, I uh, introduced the bill this year, um, and we were uh, happy to uh, finally pass this bill through both houses. Um, and now uh, we can look forward to this really making a difference uh, in so many young New York families' lives. We have to look very far or more recently than just about two months ago, where this happened again in our backyard uh, down the road in the village of Curious Joel, where a, a very young girl um, suffered the same fate. And so now, as a result of uh, this new law, which I'll let Assemblyman Zabrowski go into some further detail, but effectively, um, Every single piece of uh, furniture now in New York State uh, will have to provide access to these tip restraint devices that we see in some, but not nearly enough, uh, furniture sales. And so whether it's with the furniture packaging itself or at the point of sale, there needs to be access to a tip restraint device. This will save lives. Um, I'm thrilled to have been a very small part of it, uh, but really my thanks, all of our thanks, New York's children's thanks um, are with you, Aaron, and your family for the years of your advocacy. So thank you, and I'll turn it over to Ken Zabrowski now. Thank you, Senator Skoufis. It's been a pleasure to work with you on this and so many other measures. Uh, you know, according to the Consumer Product Safety Commission, every 17 minutes in the United States, there is an injury related to a furniture tip-over device. Literally during the, the course of this press conference, unfortunately, someone will be injured. And with this legislation, I believe that New York will finally blaze a new trail of safety, hopefully prevent these tragedies from happening in the future. And I do believe that with this law, uh, it'll start to spread across the country, and we'll start to see other states do this, as well as force the federal government to come up with new regulations, and perhaps we'll see a full nationwide standard. 
Um, as the Senator Scrufus said, this bill will require that all furniture, right now there's somewhat of a debate between 30 inches and 27 inches, every piece of furniture that is over 27 inches tall will be required to either follow the standard and have a restraint device included or have a restraint device sold in conjunction with that piece of furniture. And hopefully we will start to be able to change what is a tragedy in way too many people's lives. Um, I also want to thank the Freeds. Um, Aaron and his wife, um, through their foundation, have really blazed a trail here for New Yorkers. And I believe that we are honoring Harper today. And in her memory, we will have a tradition of safety that will spread across the country. I also, Aaron's uh, brother, David, who is a uh, constituent and a friend of mine, a uh, judge down in Rockland County, also worked with him after the tragedy to get this uh, passed. And uh, for those of us, for the senator and myself, um, this is what we do. Hopefully we are a tool for good in the state of New York, but really it's through their strength and their perseverance uh, and their family's strength that we're able to get here today. So once again, as we did on the floor of the assembly, I want to thank them. And also I want to thank Governor Cuomo. Over the past couple months, we've been talking to his office and talking to their council and explaining what the bill did, did and how it would make New York safer. And so today, hopefully, is, is the start of a new dynamic for furniture across the state of New York. So thank you very much, Senator, and to the Freeze, of course, for all your work. Thank you. Uh, on behalf of the town of Monroe uh, and its residents, I just want to thank uh, everyone associated with Harper Smiles. Uh, our town has always been uh, very prominent when it comes to tragedies in our town, and, and I think our residents have stepped up, have supported Harper Smiles and all the work that the Freeds have done. Uh, it has been an, an honor for uh, many of us to be involved with it. And the fact that uh, we can get a ray of light uh, out of such a tragedy uh, is a tribute to everyone uh, who's associated with it, and it's a tribute to your family. Uh, we have a motto in the town of Monroe that we want all our residents to make an impact, and the Freed family has certainly made an impact not only on Monroe, but on the state, and hopefully in the future on our country. So thank you very much for all you've done. And last but certainly not least, I'm going to try to keep it together. Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming. As we announced, that Governor Cuomo has signed Harper's Law. Passing of Harper's Law was a huge accomplishment for everybody that was involved as the first of its kind in the nation. Currently, the Consumer Product Safety Commission t statistics show that one child is sent to an emergency room due to falling furniture every 37 minutes, and one of those children dies every 11 days. After experiencing the tragedy that our family and community did with Harper, and then finding out that a simple $2 anchor kick could have prevented the untimely death of, death of our little lady, Harper, we knew that we needed to move forward in and with our grief and to use the energy behind it to raise awareness of the hazard of furniture tip overs, as well as to create the momentum to bring change to an entire industry. Today, I feel that we've succeeded. We're wholeheartedly thankful for the hard work and dedication we received from Senators Skoufis and Carlucci, Assemblymen Zabrowski and Schmidt, and their fellow Senators and Assembly people during this process. And I think I'd be remiss if I didn't extend a thank you to retired Senator Larkin for his hard work um, prior to his retirement. I'd like to also send a tremendous thank you out to our volunteers and donors who are always very generous with Harper's Miles um, and are diligently and dedicated board of directors. Uh, the Town of Monroe Board is always very kind to us. Um, Supervisor Cardone has uh, been a constant friend and supporter of Harper Smiles uh, through all of our events and especially for hosting us today. I just want to thank you to everybody. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. Let's get it together. <laughs> any, any questions? Sure. The mic. Um, after Harper passed away, uh, November 19th of 2016, um, we're sitting during the shiver in the first couple of days, and I said to my brother, "How do we, 
how do we let a three-year-old kid not, you know, three-year-olds tend to not have a legacy. I said, you know, how do we make sure people don't forget her because she had such a big personality. And um, he said, well, we can try to work towards a, a, some form of a, a fund or a scholarship of some form. And then the conversation in the next couple of weeks turned into, well, you know, if this happened to her, how many people has it happened to? Um, the research that we did, we realized how many children were uh, being injured and killed, um, and the numbers were totally mind-blowing. Um, so we reached out to uh, some people who have now become friends, and um, we put Harper's Law together. Uh, Harper Smiles, as an organization, strives to create safe spaces for children at home, uh, providing anchor kits. Uh, I left a few on the table if anybody needs to look at them. Um, and. Uh, to raise awareness, we have a few other programs that we run. Um, we're cu currently, uh, we do a lot of community outreach, so we're currently hosting a uh, school supply drive. Um, we do things like that just to help you know, support the organization. And I'm working with Senator Kucic and Assemblyman Sabrowski. Hmm. All this coming together, uh, you know, what does this mean to you personally? Oh, it's overwhelming. I think I made that joke to everybody in the room when I came in. I, I really don't know how to process it yet. It's. Uh, Going back to Harper having a legacy, I mean, these, these two guys were able to create a legacy for my daughter. That's, to me, I mean, I mean, it means more than I could explain. Anyone else? You good? Okay, okay, thanks very much. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks so much. Great job. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.